I needed a telehandler in order to build the ultimate man cave, but said telehandler I can't afford unless I picked one up that had a blown engine. That's what I did. With the block and the head all stripped down and looking like a rusty mess, I hauled them to the machine shop. They gave them a bath, cleaned them up, decked them, put in new sleeves, and I got them back looking like this. So let's get started. Ryan's Mobile One. So we've got a block, a head, a bunch of loosely organized parts sitting on the floor, a gasket set, the rest of an engine rebuild kit, and an empty telehandler to put it in. It's supposed to be in there. Yeah. Oh. What That's do you think? No engine. That's a small opening for getting the engine in and out, isn't it? You'll find it goes in easier. Harbor Freight one shining. Bam. You're able to get these amazing readings by crushing the plastic in between the bearings and the crankshaft. Did you identify where that oval is? Whereas there's not one here. Where are there? This part's all on. This is a little high, a little low. This needs to go some more. I totally understand why they would do it this way so you can pull it out from the front and service it from the front or do it from the rear where it's clean. Going in from the clean side I guess has its advantages. As far as driving it, I'm, I started doing it with just a screwdriver, you know, to correct, to go backwards. But then I noticed that I've still got marks in one spot here and here from where I did the screwdriver. So what I did is I took one of these plastic body panel knives and that distributes the load but it gets it right on the lip, right on the end where you have all of this reinforcement there. So I either go inside here in the corner or inside here in the corner. I just hit the back side of this because I never use that side. I just work it with a hammer like this. Little, little taps. I'm not going to move it now because I got it perfect as I said. I don't want to change that. But that's how I got it. This is a pre-greased seal. Um, before I put it in, what I'll do is, because it goes on this way, the main thing you want to do is this lip right here should have grease on it and that'll help it go on smooth. So otherwise you got metal on rubber and it grips and it can tear. Uh, for getting the gasket, you just get up underneath one of these is the easiest way to get started. Because there's less surface area and you can span it with your razor blade. Another couple places you could start would be here or here. If I just razor blade them first, get them to pop up a little bit and then just work out from there. It's just like shoveling in hard dirt. You break through the hard stuff first and then get to the softer stuff underneath. That's the way dirt works where I'm at. And then from here, you can just keep on trucking. You just kind of peel away at it. The more you can get with the razor blade in the big chunks, the less debris and cleanup you have of little chunks. And be careful of the razor blade corners. I grab them on the sides and just kind of draw it like a draw knife, like I'm pulling bark off a tree. Whatever works for you. If you can get it to pop and come like that, that's great. No sense in cutting the whole way. And then just cut across where your you know, high friction stuff is from bolts. Peel it up, go some more, and repeat. It's like watching washing ditch it. <laughs> It's like watching ditches. It's amazing. You just sit there in the ditch and watch it. No, like washing dishes. It's tedious. It's laborious. But before you know it, you're done. Plus, it's a good time to just meditate. How often can you just be bored or just have your mind go into some mundane task? Mundane tasks are actually really healthy for your brain, in my opinion. Not all the time. You got to stimulate yourself. But if you're like me and you're constantly working on new things, and you're in a state of constant, you know, like stress, stimulation, problem solving. Mundane tasks are like a balance for that. That's a really healthy thing to do. So, enjoy it. I know that sounds funny, but yeah. Also, you saw how my thumb was there and I got wise to it. Get your thumb out of the path because if you're pushing real hard and then it gives, it can really mess you up as you're going along. You encounter all kinds of different densities, hardnesses. You learn to angle from the back of your blade, the thick part that you're pushing on. You can angle that up or down and get better result. You see on the beginning I was just getting short ones. But then I just kind of revise my technique. I take, kind of feel it when it's running. I don't run as hard. It's like reeling in a fish. There's a tension about it. From here, buzz this off, clean all the grease off and put fresh grease on. And then this will be ready to go. You can spin forever. 
definitely diminishing returns. The last thing you want in a brand new rebuilt engine is a bunch of grit. And wipe it out too. And then blow it again and get some clean stuff. Most important part is wherever you have something coming into the seal. In this case, at the harmonic balancer. Put it on the outside so that that lip's really lubed up and can't get torn. It'll slip as opposed to grip and tear. You gotta grip if you're gonna rip. You gotta grab that paper, you know what I mean? If it's all greasy, then it won't. And know that this side's going against the timing cover. I've double checked it. A lot of gaskets come with this kind of stuff already on it. The nice thing about this is it's sticky. It'll hold it in place. So your bolts will line up. You don't hit gasket when you're trying to thread your bolts through the holes into the block. Just kind of tap it on there a little bit. So on this cover, you've got three long bolts and three short bolts. So let's knock this in. That wasn't so bad. Let's snug this up. Do the workout. Everybody likes working out anyway, right? That's why I get my gym membership. Well, there's the inner timing cover. No big deal. Once the timing gears are in, then we can do our rocker arms and all that stuff without having damage or risk to the valves or cylinders. What I like to do is get everything lined up, and right now you've got top dead center. That's the way you line the gears up, right? So all the valves are closed, but the pistons on number one and four are right there on the valves. So what you do is you get your timing gears on, uh, get everything set up, and then rotate it so where you can see on here that all your pistons are in the middle. This works on four cylinder engines. So get them all in the middle, timing gears are such, and camshaft is such to where when you go to tighten the rockers on, you're not going to be tightening a valve into a piston or something. If some stupid little thing, it's just insurance policy, just to be careful. And friends, we are being careful. One more little step, we've got this gasket sticking up right here. We're going to trim that off. I'm going to take a little bit of the assembly lube and put it on it. On this side, there should be a bunch of these little lines. Two here, one here, and one here. So this end out, thread that in with the crank. The oil comes through that and lubricates this thing. If these thread in easy, that's going to make my day. But, uh, that makes my day. thought when we were hammering this around that might rotate a little bit. That was a possibility. Fortunately, it didn't happen. Alright, so this one is for the fuel pump or the distributor, fuel, distributor pump assembly. This one's for the camshaft. I'm just going to line that up. And unfortunately I didn't make a mark for the camshaft on the timing cover. But I just figured it would all work out and be okay. And of course it isn't. That's why I'm a little bit of a control freak on some things. But the good news is that turns by hand. And we can bring that together anyway. So I need to get that keyway to line up about right here. And then the rest of this should fall into place pretty good. That could use some assembly lube. So if I hit the camshaft and knock on it, it's going to actually impact the lifters and it could knock the plug out of the back. The welch plug. There's freeze plugs and welch plugs at the end of the camshaft. There's no antifreeze. There's no reason for a freeze plug. It's just a welch plug. It's just a hole that is plugged because it was only used for machining stuff. This is so much easier than you would think it is going to be. <laughs> you notice that this dot is straight up with here, our keyway is straight down. Over shortcuts and trying to use starting fluid to get this to prime. 
that caused the damage to the cylinder, well, the damage to the piston ring landings uh, anyway. So you've got a little tab here. This goes where your keyway is, your little woodruff key in there. Cotter key, whatever you want to call it. This one's a 19 millimeter, three quarter inch. Send it. So for the camshaft retaining nut, the torque spec is 50. So you get this ring here to be where it's at the 50 and the zero here, you can see the zero, it's lined up with the line in the middle, tighten it off. We're lined up with the collar at the 30 and we're at the zero at the line in the middle. Tighten the nut. I'm just going to grab some big old channel locks because that's that thing is thick. That's not going anywhere. So we can rotate that around back and forth now. Everything's in place. Everything's good. I'm just going to run this around a few times. Oil pump gears are getting plenty of lube on them. They're looking good. Stringing out a bunch of lube on the rest of this too. Just take a little while. Within six turns you'll get it. The reason why I want the marks back is so I can line up the injection pump. Better to do this now before putting the cover back on and just leave it. There they are. Here, here, and uh, that's it. Go back just a hair. Well, that's like straight up. Man, these are sloppy marks. They should have chose different teeth. It should be here. And here and here at least, or these, not like coming apart, separating, but it is, whatever. <laughs> I like precise timing marks that make sense. This makes sense. This is good. OCD just goes nuts on those. I want it to be perfect. I want it to make sense and be right in the middle. That makes sense. So I've got a bag of timing cover bolts, and in that bag of timing cover bolts, I have this that is meant to be on there. <laughs> against the gear. So you can read the witness marks on this and see that this side goes toward the gear. We don't really need to crank this over from here on out. Everything's moved up, everything's good to go. Because this is a sealing surface, we're gonna have to clean that up. You can see where it's really been gouged in by the seal. I did a three-part series on how to tear the engine down or what's involved, what was wrong with it. Be sure to check that out if you want to, and uh, we're gonna put it back together. The good, the bad, the ugly. Bonus footage at the end. Huntington Airport. Into this patch of dirt right here, best I can.